644. It is Monday, and uh, this is 1320 WILS, the last day of February. And uh, here we go. What's that? Oh, leap year. And Mike, Mike reminding me that, yeah, this is a special day here. Uh, my next guest, known as the Money Therapist, Holly Signorelli, joins us. Find her at the, themoneytherapist.com. Holly, great to have you here. Hey, how are you? Good, good. And I wanted to talk to you about refunds because apparently we're going to be getting like $330 billion in tax refunds. And there was That's a, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, there's this poll that says something like uh, 50% of us are going to put it into savings. Do, do you believe that? Well, I looked at that and I was like, that's a bunch of BS because people don't put them, <laughs> they should do it. And maybe some people are. But interestingly, in this article, if you dig down deeper into it, they're talking about really young millennials, like 18 to 24 year olds. And I'm just wondering where they, they did this, this study. Yeah, you know? well, I, I think people <laughs> say that, right? Is that, is that how it works where you say you're going to do it and then three months later, the money is somehow spent? Well, absolutely, especially when you are, you know, I work with mostly business owners, so they end up owing because you have to try, you know, nobody's forcing it out of their paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. So when people do have W-2 income and they get money back, it's really their own money, but it still feels like it's not. It feels like a gift. So it, it is pretty normal for people to actually want to go on a vacation, like it says here, or mm. just do something fun with it, especially if you're younger, because, you know, some of these kids have this student loan debt. That's what they should be spending it on, right? Now, you're known as the money therapist. Is, is some of the work you do, is it actually psychological? Well, yes, what it is, is I've done it for 26 years. I've worked with thousands of people, and I've I realized over the years that everybody makes the same stupid mistakes with money, no matter what their income level what is, mean, because right? it they is spend it? on emotion. You're saying they just spend it? Is that the mistake? Yes. There's, uh, the, the biggest thing in my book is about instant gratification, because there's so many things we nickel and dime ourselves to death with. Mm -hmm. So we don't have money at the end of the month to buy something that we really want or to pay down debt. And we think we don't make enough money, but we actually do. It's actually there. We're just buying things that have absolutely no value to us. Uh, Holly's, book by, uh, Holly's book, by the way, titled, uh, Do You Know Where Your Money Is? Holly Signorelli is here. Uh, the... What is it about those people that really do save? It almost seems like it's innate to their character, and then so many of us that just are not able to do that. Yeah, it really does come down to the emotions as well, because if you look at the older generations, they came from the Depression era or right after, so they didn't want to spend any money. They actually didn't have too much fun, and a lot of them saved you know, every paycheck with their 401ks, and they have a pretty good amount of savings. But then Generation X came by, and they looked at their parents. So it's a perception. Everything is a perception, especially at childhood. It may not be the right perception, but it's how you perceive the event. So they said, no, we want to have fun. So Generation X, and I'm part of Generation X, I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but in, in the general population of Generation X, they have the least amount of savings and the biggest amount of debt, which is a very bad combination. They, they, they felt their parents may, are you saying they felt their parents didn't spend enough money, that kind of thing? Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, because so many of them didn't. I mean, so, so many people that you work with that are retired, they still don't want to spend any money. They're so hmm. afraid that they'll need it for something else that they don't enjoy uh, life. So you know? if, you, if, if you are a Generation Xer then, uh, how do you overcome that propensity to you know, just spend freely? It's very important to be aware of your spending habits, whether it's a credit card or if, whether it's cash, to be aware of the emotions behind it. Because if you actually do stop and think about it, you actually have a sixth sense when it comes to money. So when you're buying something that you really don't even want or care about, you do know, you do kind of get that clenching in your stomach. Something tells you you don't need so it. Then why, are, why are you doing it then? Because it's because of the emotions like desire, just pure desire of wanting something. And I've often seen in my practice where people think that they're not going to get a chance to have it. Like maybe they get a lump sum of money, a chunk of money like for their refund, and they don't think they're going to get another one for another year mm -hmm. in their mind, you know. So they limit themselves and then they think, okay, I've got to do something really, you know, big with this tax refund or buy this pair of shoes or something that you could easily set money aside for every week. But and I see that all the time too, so, when people get bonuses. And they're just buying things they don't. So, so how do you mentally 
kind of uh, realize that, hey, I, I don't need this. I don't, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to buy this. Well, a lot of it does have to do with just being, literally being present and being aware when you're buying it. I mean, I'll give you a stupid example that I used to do. Is I used to buy those trash magazines all the time, and I would buy like three or four of them because it was kind of like entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, you know, it wasn't really entertaining me, and they were all the same. You know, this magazine well, like, are all the same. Us Weekly, that kind of thing, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, but these are the kind of things that people buy that are like 5 or $10 at a time. So they don't think about it. Mm -hmm. And it ends up adding up to several hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And the bigger impulse buys are things that people do out of more of like a, an insecurity or a jealousy. They want to keep up with the Joneses. I mean, we've all heard about that. Right. So it causes the, our emotions to dictate how we spend instead of us, instead of us taking control of our own spending habits and our own financial situation. So that's it. So what percentage of the spending a typical person does, how much do you think is just uh, unnecessary and emotional? Uh, I would say I would say easily 20%. Yeah, easily. If you go out and have a meal, like a fancy meal, is that wasteful? It depends because, I mean, if you have the money and you can afford it and it's not, you know, creating any kind of hardship on you, mm. then it's okay. But I do think a lot of people do more expensive meals than are necessary that can't afford it because you can have a lot of fun without spending a lot of money. And, again, there's nothing wrong with going out for a nice meal. But people do spend a lot of money on food, especially yeah. business owners, because they're, you know, they've got this money in the account, so they're just kind of spending it, and they're not thinking about, wait, what's deductible and what's not. Do, do you have a refund coming yourself? Or? I never get a refund. Yeah. I think it's overrated because it's your own income. You know, it's your own money. So you, you make sure back. you balance the books so you're, you're not getting a big refund. That's probably a smart yeah, way to well, go. Yeah, well, I right? am a CPA, right? Yeah, you know how to do that. <laughs> you, do, you, yeah. do you break even, like literally to the to the penny almost? Well, that's impossible. You just yeah. want to be close, you know, a little bit over or a little bit under. Yeah. yeah. Now, so you, so a as, as a CPA, you probably you were always a saver yourself. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. But I'm also a financial advisor, so yeah. I like to have different types of, you know, vehicles to but, invest in. But this is like where you just, you're naturally a saver, is that right? Yeah, I think that's just something also, when it goes back to childhood, you know, my family always saved, and they were very kind of frugal, and I like to have nice things, but there's ways to have nice things, yeah. you know. But it just, money is, it really is a mindset about knowing that, you, uh, most people do have enough money to do the things they want to do if they weren't spending on things that really had no value. So when you're about to buy something, just think about, hey, do I want this? Or maybe I'll put it in my little travel fund. Mm. You know, that's what we do when we're going to go on vacation. Every time we're about to do something, we're like, well, let's not do that. Well, let's go ahead and put that 100 Instead of going out for that dinner, let's put that 100 in the travel thing. Mm. We have cash. Yeah. Smart. Holly Signorelli, The Money Therapist, themoneytherapist.com, and her book, Do You Know Where Your Money Is? Holly, thanks. Hey, you bet. Yep.